the dawn of electricity. For going back tens of thousands of years, nighttime is when things got interesting. You know, it's when the Bacchanalian festivals would happen. It's when, you know, the men and women would run out into the woods and drink wine and have sex and make babies. And that, to a large extent, informs what we're doing now. The freaks come out at night, man. I don't know what to tell you, you know what I mean? That's uh, always when people want to party is at nighttime. The lights go out, people want to dance. I just think that, you know, things go down in the night, you know? People want to get a little more freaky in the night. Some people say nothing good happens after 2 a.m., but nothing creative happens before 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> the darkness, being under cover of the dark, people being able to cut loose to feel less self-conscious, less self-aware, less, you know, involved in our own little personal neuroses. Music in the dark brings people to that spirit world where anything can happen. And I, I think the closest I've ever felt to God was on a dance floor. And I think a lot of people feel the same. The funny thing is, if we were doing this interview 10,000 years ago, we could be talking about how at night we bang on drums and dance around lights and a fire. Fast forward 10,000 years, people are still dancing with lights in their eyes to rhythmic music. So it's almost encoded in our DNA. EDM didn't just appear out of nowhere. You know, it, it has its story and its lineage. And that's important to recognize. And um, part of it is, is understanding and appreciating that events like EDC and Nocturnal Wonderland have been around for two decades. My first memory of Nocturnal was 97. Pasquale brought us out for Nocturnal and he lost his venue two days before. A lot of parties back then got shut down before they even happened. And Pasquale found an Indian reservation and paid the tribe to be able to throw this party. The Indians had had a quarrel because the ones that agreed to throw the party and took the money were not sharing it with the other Indians that also own the property. Two days later, 20,000 people show up to an unannounced venue. So they had closed off the fences with the locks and the chains and um, had guns. These Indians are shooting guns off. Pasquale tried to talk to them and they wouldn't have it. And so he ended up slamming on the gate and telling us to bust the gate open with the car. 20,000 ravers cut through uh, barbed wire fences, pull in and run into the party. And that was kind of an uh, interesting first memory of a nocturnal wonderland. Some people are set in their ways and they think that like this like style of dance music is better than this like and if you listen to this style of dance music you're stupid or you're like lame or you're like in the past and it's like but they have no like true appreciation for like the history and like the build up and what it took to get from that the beginnings of that genre to the main stage i think that people could do a little more research and you know go deeper than like what ha came out last year they could go 10 years deeper, they can go 20 years deeper, or 30 years deeper for that matter. The funny thing with dance music, especially electronic dance music, there's one person who invented it, which is um, a friend of mine. He started a band called Silver Apples in the late 60s. Um, his name's Simon, or Simon. And he, if you go back and listen to this record that he made in 1968, he invented dance music. There's one song called Oscillations. It's got a 4-4 kick and synths that he built himself and it's it's house music. So it's really interesting that you can say that was when it started.